Israel has fulfilled almost every dream or hope anyone could possibly have had for it over the last hundred years. The, 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 the Zionist idea, which is over a hundred years old, believed that a homeland for the Jewish people could prosper in the desert and could achieve incredible civilized societal advancements that no other civilization could if only given the chance. And in a short 60 years, Israel has actually done that. The dreams for the future are to build on all of that and to bridge all of that into the rest of the region if possible. The hopes and dreams of Israel have to be, con have to be connected to the hopes and dreams for the, s for the neighbors who surround us. If that doesn't happen, Israel is going to simply be an isolated, fulfilled dream, but isolated. I think the way that that can be done, my hope and dream is really not only for Israel, but for, uh, but for the Arab countries that surround it. And in order for Israel's hopes and dreams to truly succeed, the hopes and dreams of, their, of our neighbors must also be fulfilled. And there is one real way of doing that. And so my hope and dream for both Israel and for Egypt and Jordan and Lebanon and Iraq and all the rest of the countries is to somehow change the educational system so that peace is taught, so that humanity is taught, so that tolerance is taught, as opposed to what is being taught now. We're all looking for solutions. Every president looks for a solution during his term or his two terms and somehow it always eludes us because we're always trying to do this in four years or eight years. We're always trying to do this during this administration or that administration can't be done that way in my opinion. It has to be done in a curriculum of education that teaches children how to relate to their neighbors in a peaceful, tolerant way. We've learned that in the United States. We've learned that and how continue to learn it even in Israel among ourselves. But somehow that is not being learned in the immediate surrounding area. It's very important to understand and it's not a question of winning and losing. Western values, we sometimes call them Judeo-Christian values, but Western values are values of tolerance. Western Europe, in fact, Europe had to learn it the hard way in the 20th century, in the most devastatingly hard way that probably history has ever seen. But I'm hoping that we have learned it. The United States had to learn it in the hardest and most devastating way in the previous century, and how tolerance and understanding is the only thing that's going to allow us to prosper and survive. First and most important reason to come to Israel is because it is one great vacation. It is a fun place to be. We don't hear about all the fun of Israel all, all that much, and certainly because you know we get so many, Israel gets so much publicity for the you know because it's in the news all the time. It's on the front pages, but it's not on the front pages because you can go swimming with dolphins. It's not on the front pages because you can because you can um, ha have a, a marvelous time both in the desert and the mountains. But you can go skiing and swimming on the same day. It's not on the front pages because it has the most wonderful nightlife that Tel Aviv does, and some of it is even in Jerusalem. It's on the front pages for all, unfortunately, the negative reasons. But I think if people would discover Israel and discover the charm of Israel, the fun of Israel, and particularly the happiness of the Israeli people, I think that they would really like to come. I think that they would like to come back. There was a, a survey taken of a fellow by the name of Spengler just this past week um, said that the happiest country in the world is Israel, or the happiest people in the world are Israelis. And he created a formula by which he judged that is that the Israelis are the happiest people in the world because they have, per capita, the highest birth rate and the lowest suicide rate. And if judging by those two standards, the highest birth rate means you have a great faith and belief in man and a great faith in creating life. And the lowest suicide rate is, is because you have the lowest rate of depression and the lowest rate of self-criticism. And if that's a way of judging a society, Israel is a very happy society in spite of all the pressures and in spite of all the stress and in spite of all the difficulties that we have to go through. It's a very happy place to be. And my hopes for the Jewish community are very much the same as they are for everybody, I think. I think that um, 
particularly the Jewish community in the United States and outside of Israel, but even in Israel itself. I think that education, Jewish education, uh, really lost a couple of generations of Americans back in the 20th century. Perhaps that was inevitable because of the great immigration that took place and because of the millions and millions of people who were struggling to make a living and couldn't really give their children the education, the Jewish education, and because a great American education was available free. And, of course, Jewish education was not. Well, Jewish education is still not very, is, is still quite expensive at the same time. I think it's important that Jews, both adults and children, but especially the children, get the education that perhaps their parents and grandparents couldn't have. And I think a trip to Israel, I think these trips on birthright and the discovery programs that bring young people to Israel give them the opportunity to rediscover themselves or discover perhaps who they are in the first place. And the, the best way of doing that is by educating yourself. Because I think that the only way that you're going to find out who you are is to find out who came before you.